Hey guys, and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, this is part six, and let's get started. In this video, we're going to answer the question of when using publicly available information. So for example, when was this photo taken where we can see this village fire? And when was this video taken where we can see this large smoke plume coming out in the background? We're going to do that using three simple tools. The first one, which is one of my favorites, is Google Earth. And we're going to see just exactly what Google Earth can do. We're going to use Google Maps, which we looked at in a video before. And we're going to use another platform called Sentinel Hub, which also provides satellite imagery. And we're going to use these three together and fuse them together to get the smallest window of time so that we can start to assess exactly when the damage occurred or narrow it down within the space of a few days so that we can not only take when the date was, when they were uploaded or when we received these images, but rather we can actually understand just by using satellite imagery to verify visually when these things might have occurred and when they might have been filmed or when the photo was taken. First up, we're going to use Google Earth. Google Earth is one of the most powerful tools you can use in open source research for a number of reasons. Of course, it's a satellite platform. It's a way to view different satellite images, to leave pins on a map and to identify different locations, specifically for geolocation and having a look at other data on a map as well. One of the benefits about Google Earth in comparison to Google Maps is the fact that we can slide back in time. We're currently looking at Uluru, which is also called Ayers Rock, and it's in the middle of Australia. And we have a village near Ayers Rock, which we can have a look at if we scroll back in time and see how it looked quite a number of years ago. What I've done is I've clicked the little wheel, the little time wheel, up in the top of Google Earth. And we can use this slider to slide back in time and view buildings as they were in the past. And we can view Im imagery from as early as 2005 of just this village. Of course, other areas we can view much earlier and other specific areas or more updated areas will have more imagery available here. You'll notice that when I skip through here, sometimes it'll skip through in two years and sometimes it'll skip through in the matter of days or months or weeks as well. So it depends on when the imagery is actually updated as well. What you'll also notice is that when I scroll back in time, shadows change and views change. And this is because a satellite image is always taken at a different angle. So for example, we can see the shadows in the side of the rock here on Ayers Rock. But if we scroll back in time, we can see other views where there may have been more shadows, where the view may have been more clear. And as we go back in time, we can see various imageries and it also goes to show different angles. Another way to view this is to take a look at one of my favorite cities in the world, Khartoum in Sudan. Khartoum has some amazing architecture, but if we look at the marketplace, we can notice some of the shadows that we can see here. When we scroll back in time, we can get a good idea of how some of these buildings look on each side. Notice these buildings in the middle. Notice these buildings in the middle. We can see this side of the building. We can see this side of the building. We can see this side of the building. And we can see other sides as well. This just goes to show the different angles that satellites take images at. This is really important to remember for not only looking back in time, but also having a look at the sides of buildings if we're trying to geolocate things, if we're trying to look for a sign, if we may have seen a building that's been destroyed or new development or things like that. We can simply do that just by having a look at the alternative side of a building. In one of the other videos, you might remember that when we were sent this image, we were told it was in Nigeria and that after doing an image of Earth search, we found articles that mentioned that it was actually in Myanmar. In one of the other videos, we also went through geolocation and we actually geolocated this village. But we'll do that quickly now, just by having a look at the Elmraku township. So we had this place and going through the geolocation quickly, we had these mountains at the right, at the back here, 
and we had this straight road as well. So if we identify our mountains that we can see on Google Maps and we follow the straight road up, we should be able to identify our village about here. And just again, before, we went through and actually narrowed down our village. So one of the ways is by identifying small patterns in the photo that represent the same patterns on a satellite image. For example, we can see this brown tinted building here, this blue one and this red one. We can also see those here. So we know that this village was the same as the one in this photo as well. So let's take this location and I'm going to copy these coordinates down in the bottom of the screen here. What I'll do is I'll just click on them and double click there. And I'm going to copy those and take them over to my Google Earth and drop them in. And this will take me straight to that location where we just geolocated that photo. And here we are, we can see that image there. So let's click our wheel, which is at the top of Google Earth, to view new satellite imagery. So what have we got? Well, we've got something from the 14th of October 2019. But remember, in one of the past episodes when we went through and found this photo during an image of Earth search, we found that actually the photo was taken in May 2020. We don't have that satellite imagery available to us. The most recent satellite imagery we have for this town is in 2019. This is where we can use that third tool that I mentioned in this video, which is Sentinel Hub. Sentinel Hub has very regular imagery, and you'll notice that as you click on the dates. But what you'll also notice is, is that when you zoom in on Sentinel Hub, it's not as clear, especially not as clear as Google Earth. Let's take a look at our location in Sentinel Hub and see what we can see. So here we are, zoomed in as far as we can be on the image of Sentinel Hub over the village that we geolocated this photo of. We can't zoom in any further than we actually can on Sentinel Hub here, but we can definitely start to have a look and see if there are any changes around that May 20 date that we saw in the news articles, just to verify the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward to May 2020. Now I'm on the 3rd of May. You'll notice that sometimes there's a little bit of cloud cover and we can also see that represented up here in Sentinel Hub as well. So let's keep going forward and see if we can get a day when there's less cloud cover. Okay, so there's no change on May 8, May 13, May 18. There appears to be change between May 13 and May 18. One of the reasons why Sentinel Hub is so useful is because we have this satellite banding over here, which essentially is a combination of different colors in the satellite image. So I'm going to use the infrared banding of bands 8, 4, and 3. All I have to do is click on that, and it'll bring my satellite image up with that. Now let's use that and scroll forward in time again. We can see that there's been evident change between the 18th and the 13th of May. If we want a comparison side by side, a simple way that I like to do is just make a quick screenshot so we can double verify that. So here we have an image from the 13th of May on the left and an image of the 18th of May on the right. We can see clear change between the two dates. Specifically, we can see this darker patch that is down here where buildings have either been burnt or destroyed. Something that I often like to do is scroll forward in time and backwards in time just to rule out any negatives. And we could see the change indicated between the 13th and 18th on the right here. If we scroll further in time, which I've done, we can identify that the burnt area has actually changed and that grass or greenery is starting to grow back through that area. So what we can say for sure is that that photo was taken around that time and we verified a little bit more in that imagery by actually having a look at perhaps the size and scale of destruction that happened in that village around that time. And this also adds to the visuals of the news article that we looked at before. So repeating this for our next case study that we're looking at, which was in Syria. And we remember from looking at the YouTube video when we actually geolocated this video, that it was in Eastern Aleppo 
at the thermal power plant. And that was the thermal power plant that we identified when we made that panorama that we can actually see in the background there with the, the smokestacks or the, the small sort of cylindrical towers right next to where that smoke was coming out of. So if we go to that power station now, so here I am at the Eastern Aleppo thermal power plant that we identified as the location that was burning in the background. And already we can see that these things have been destroyed. We knew those were the things or the, the uh, tanks that were destroyed because they were just on the left of this image here that we can see just behind the walkie-talkie. We can get a clearer version of that uh, over here. And so that was just on the left of these five pylons that we can see here. So the first thing we can do is just scrolling back in time. We knew that the video was uploaded in 2016. So I'm already going to scroll back to 2016 and just see when these containers weren't destroyed. So already we can see between the 21st of June and December 11, we have in December 11, they weren't destroyed. And in 2016, June 21, they were destroyed. So that's our window of time that we have in Google Earth. Now we can replicate this same area in Sentinel Hub and see if we can identify or narrow down that time there. So what I'm going to do is click on view in Google Maps. This will bring up my location in Google Maps. I'm just going to click on this with a slow click. And again, I'm going to get my coordinates. I'm going to copy and paste these ones and I'm going to put them into Sentinel Hub over here. Okay, so we're looking at Eastern Aleppo Thermal Power Plant in Syria, the one that we were just looking at on Google Earth over here. So first of all, on Google Earth, we knew that between June 2016 and December 2015 was the window of period when these were destroyed. So let's go back to 2016. Specifically, we want to go to June. Okay, so I want to go through all of the dates in that window of time to see when it may have been destroyed. So I'm going to start doing that now. So what we've done here is we've gone back in time and we found a date on February 16, 2016. And what we can see is a very large smoke plume coming out of those containers there on that exact date. Now, if we go to the day before, we can see, okay, it's very cloudy. And then 17th of January. So 17th of January, 2016, these containers were not destroyed. But on February 16, 2016, they were on fire or they were very much smoking. And on the 7th of March, they were destroyed. This smoke plume is fairly significant just like the one in this video that we have here. On the video on the YouTube channel, the date that it was uploaded was March 18, 2016. So we can say that after we've geolocated that, that this smoke plume that was evident on February 16 was the smoke plume that we're seeing in the back there. Now it could have been burning for one or two days. It's likely that this may have been on the same day we can definitely say that we can narrow down that window of time just using some of that visual evidence that we found right here over the past few minutes, just using freely available information that you don't need to pay for, you don't need a premium account for, you can use it for free and identify these sorts of things just using that freely available information. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you did, please leave a like and a comment and don't forget to share it with others that might find it useful. And please do subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date for more content.